What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we got for you a preseason volleyball workout. So we're hitting some jump training to start, strength training, and then finishing up with some cardio. We're trying to get a little bit more functional cardio instead of just running on the treadmill. So stuff that you can do in the gym, that's a little bit more enjoyable. So finish with cardio, make sure your jump training is good, your strength training is on point, and then we hit cardio at the end. So if you guys enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We post new videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so make sure you subscribe to catch all of them. Hope you guys like it. All right, guys, we are starting off with some monster walks. So we haven't done these in a while on the channel, um, but this is a great way to activate your glutes, hips, um, your legs in general before you start doing some training. So we're getting into jump training today, right? Preseason strength, jump training, a little bit of cardio, functional cardio at the end. So we're firing up the muscles that we are about to use. First thing we got banded pogos. We're doing 20 of them. So these are not gonna be like squat jumps that we do sometimes where you have a massive jump. These are literally just pogos banded. So we're taking off some of the pressure when we land some of that force. Good repetition. Don't let your heels hit the ground. Keep everything nice and tight and locked. Moving on to some multi-planar plate hops. So one leg gonna jump lateral, jump up onto the plate. The better you get at these, the higher the plate you can use and the farther you can set them apart. If you can get them apart a good distance, hit everything under control where you don't have to take multiple hops, where you're jumping up into the middle of the plate every single time, that's ideal. We're gonna do single leg broad jumps, but you alternate every two. So, yeah, run it out. You're gonna jump, jump, switch to the next leg mid air. Adding on, we're gonna do jump, jump, lateral jump, single leg stick. Then you're gonna hit the next leg. If you're not advanced enough to do single leg, then keep this double leg, like the landing for the lateral jump. If you can't do single leg with great form, then do a double leg land. Now all we're doing is adding two more jumps at the end. So two broads off the leg that you land on for that lateral jump. We're doing a standing box jump. Nothing crazy. You don't need to go max height, right? We want you to float on top, land, maximum clearance, big load, big jump. So now we're doing a step to a box jump. So how we're gonna do it, get in your approach jump position. So your takeoff. So for Spencer and I, it's like this, our right foot slightly in front. So now you're gonna move your right foot or the front foot to the back. You're gonna step forward and you're gonna jump out of that. Perfect, so yep, just line up, get your correct distance, move that foot back. Perfect, now to make it challenging, we're gonna flip it. So whatever is your natural jumping stance, you're gonna flip. So now Spencer's gonna start with his left foot back. He's gonna step and jump. This one's gonna feel kind of awkward unless you jump well off of both, but we need to be good at jumping off of both feet because you never know how you're gonna have to jump, how rapidly the stance you're in. So we need to train out of it all. Progressing to a lateral step to a jump. So it can kind of be like a little shuffle push off to a jump. So big thing when you jump up onto the box after that push off, core stays tight, glutes are locked in so you don't move mid air. You jump straight up exactly where you need to be. Final progression, you're gonna be opened up a little bit. Front foot, 45 degree angle. Back foot is gonna be facing sideways away from the box. You're gonna turn and jump up. So it's producing power out of the turn, out of rotation. Squeeze everything going up so you stay on track. You don't spin off access. I said access like access. I knew what I meant. Good, just like that. First up for strength training, we're doing trap bar. So four sets of three, which means we're going kind of heavy. We're in preseason, so we're trying to build some strength. Go heavy. I do not want three at your like three rep max weight, right? You should be able to hit like four or five of these. Um, we're not going like to failure at all, but we do want it to be heavy. And then you're following that up. Mini band, three way kick forward lateral and then 45 degrees back mini band can go anywhere it can go around the ankles can go around the knees it's harder when it's around the ankles 
just giving a leverage thing further away from the hip. Really squeeze your butt on these. That stabilizing leg, make sure your knee doesn't track in going out to the side and then back 45 degrees. These definitely fire up glutes. So really important to have strong glutes and hips, especially for athletes. A lot of our power is produced from our posterior chain, especially our glutes helps a lot when it comes to power production, right? Having to jump up fast, get high, move quickly, drop down, get up. Especially in preseason, we're really trying to build this shit up. First thing for the next set, we are starting with pull-ups. So we're going six to eight reps. So we're not maxing out. This is probably like 60, 70% of our max that we can do. Like if you're talking about Spencer, for me, it's probably like 70 to 80%. So go in that range, not fully max out, but about somewhere between 60 to 80% of your max, that according number. Okay, after pull-ups, we're doing single arm lamb I'm press. So eight aside, go with a weight that's semi-challenging, not a max out weight. Something where you could probably hit about 10 of them. We're doing eight each side squeeze your core you can go split stance square we like split i think it's way more sport specific works the core a little bit better works the glute having to stabilize knees don't cave in so i always like split third part of this series we're doing a row to a w so row it back external rotation to pull it up notice he's rotating to get into the w it's not his arms flaring back, it's through the shoulder. Just rotate. Try to get your arms up as much as you can. You do not need a heavy band for this. Go light, it's just some arm care, so nothing crazy. This is one of my favorite things to do. I actually think we did this in our last video, um, but this is an amazing exercise for your shoulders and honestly your back, all those little supporting muscles. Series three, first exercise we're doing step down. So this is all about control, loading up your glutes, stepping down. The leg on the box is doing all the work. The other one is simply just tapping the ground with your heel. Do not push up off of it. You're gonna wanna sit back. It's normal for your knee to track over your toe a little bit. What we don't want is just for it to go too crazy over. You want to make sure that your heel does not lift off the box. Heel stays on. Sit back, load up the glutes. Try to keep a big chest under control the entire time. 3B, we're doing a kettlebell bottoms up waiter's carry. So elbow at 90 degrees. Shoulder stays down. Make sure it doesn't lift up by your ears. Everything stays contracted. Balance that kettlebell. Make sure it doesn't flip to either side. If it does, watch your head. Nice and sturdy. Go with the weight that's kind of challenging. You see how Spencer's shaking a little bit, but you want to be able to do it. You don't want it to be falling every second. That defeats the purpose. Core stays tight, spine stays straight. Don't overcompensate to one side. Third thing, we're doing Nordic hamstring curls. So go down as slowly as you can. We have three of them. When you need to, just release, push yourself back up. If you don't have a partner, you can do a glute hamstring machine. So lock your feet in and then you can just go back. Okay. Last little bit of this workout, we're hitting some cardio stuff. So start with the ropes, 20 seconds on, as fast as you can, as hard as you can, because then you're gonna get 10 seconds off before you do another 20 on. So trying to make this cardio a little bit of strength building in there, strength endurance, a little bit more functional than just full on running and sprints, stuff you can do in the gym. I am not a fan of the treadmill because I've ran on it far too long in my soccer career, so. Ropes are awesome, great for shoulder building, for structural tissue, cardio as well. After that, we're doing some jump rope. We got, once again, 20 on, 10 off, 20 on. Doing a little bit of intervals, so you have breaks, which means your on is gonna be as fast as you can, as hard as you can. Third thing, we're doing a sled sprint. As fast as you can, all the way down, flip it around, come back. 
obviously for our length. Go about 25 yards as fast as you can, full sprint. Last thing, alternating V-ups, getting some core work in there. Use your core, control it. Opposite hand to opposite foot. 20 total. Good job.